Welcome to the Burn Boot Camp Podcast, where you'll find the motivation, inspiration, and empowerment that leads to real transformation, the lifelong kind. Keep listening and keep moving, Burn Nation. All right, everybody, and welcome to the Burn Boot Camp Podcast. I am one of your amazing hosts, Devin Klein, and you know Morgan and I are on here kicking you back and forth between her and I and really helping you navigate this world called health, right? And so today is a really interesting episode because what I want to do is talk with you about what I call and what we call in Burn Nation, the cycle of lasting change. I teach all of our trainers to teach this to you in our focus meetings. And this is really the foundational, the fundamental philosophy for you to create transformation. If you look at any gym in the country, it's inspire, empower, transform. Transform is the outcome. It's not just transforming physically, it's transforming mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And oftentimes, since 85% of our franchise partners are members first, oftentimes financially as well. So this, whatever... Whatever perspective that you want to take on this episode, what I want you to what I want you to pick out is one area of your life that you need the most work on. I want you to pick out whether that be health, your financial uh, situation, your career, whether you're an entrepreneur, you have your own business, or you're a hired gun and you're a career person. Whether you want to take a perspective of your financial life in general or your relationships, this cycle of lasting change is going to help you create a philosophy, and then a tool, a strategy so that you can actually get to where you've always wanted to go without continuing to start over again and again and again and again. Do you follow me? Make sense? Say yes. All right. So let's talk about the philosophy first. So the philosophy is very important because it's giving you direction. To me, a philosophy is also a strategy. And a strategy is something that you can repeat over and over and over and over. And you have to have very little maintenance on this strategy. And it works every time. There's a re- there's a predictable and repeatable outcome. So when I get into this cycle, all right, I'm going to, I want to actually show you a graphic if you're watching this on video on my phone so you can see it. But otherwise, just listen up because I'm going to paint this picture for you and, uh, and, and actually kind of illustrate what this cycle is. It's actually a physical wheel. It's a cycle. There's four parts to it. But before we do that, we're going to talk about philosophy as a strategy. So at Burn Bootcamp, all right, we are passionate about educating you to reach your nutrition goals and uncovering goals that are sustainable, that have long-term orientation and that are custom designed to your lifestyle, right? To your specific habits, the way you want to live life, not the way that we want you to live life. This is about your journey, all right? Not our perspective, but your perspective of what success looks like. That's very important. And that starts, it's going to start with the question, why are you here and what do you want out of this? And that's something that you really need to think about as well. If you are too going to be passionate about being educated, Because if we're passionate about educating and you're not passionate about being educated, then it's not a two-way street and it's never going to work because we can't want it more for you than you would ever want it for yourself. That's not a relationship that's going to be sustainable. And just think about how logical that is. Like you can't want a marriage with someone more than they want it with you. That's called divorce. And so if we're going to marry our our lifestyle goals, our our ritual goals and desires and dreams, then we need to ensure that uh, we want it bad, all right? We need to believe, okay? Believe, keyword, it says we believe in our philosophy that you can eat healthy and enjoy an exciting relationship with food, an exciting one, that you, that, that your relationship with food is one where food fuels you, where it excites you, where you wake up every day knowing that you can eat delicious food, but it can also help you create energy and longevity out of your body. But but the key is without restrictive and hardcore and hardcore rules. Like, how many times do, does a quote unquote diet lead to deprivation? Which a diet, by the way, if you've heard me say this before, you'll like this. If not, if you've heard me say this before, then you know I hope that you like this. If not, well. This is the way that I think about our diet culture. 
The word diet itself in Webster's Dictionary says, if you go look it up, go Google it right now. Unless you're driving, don't Google it if you're driving. But it says, a habitual consumption of food by a living organism. Key word, habitual meaning habit, root word. Again, going back to Webster's Dictionary, look up habit. What does that say? A routine, a ritual that is extremely hard to break, repeatable, systematic, and produces the same result time and time again, something like that. So how is it then that in a hundred years, in the last hundred years of modern society, we've had over 90 contemporary diets, almost one per year that you would say was a mainstream diet? You might want to think of things like the apple cider vinegar diet, Mediterranean diet, paleo diet, ketogenic diet, and you could keep going on and on and on, Atkins diet. And you can go all the way, way back in the day to like some very, very simplistic ideology around what a diet is. So are we really on a diet? Are we actually using that word in the appropriate sense? Or are we using it as some like temporary fleeting strategy that we jump from from time to time when we get bored, when we need a reason to justify, you know, why we want to start living unhealthy habits. We just start a countdown and then we have a diet that lasts for 90 days. And then we're like, oh, I can do anything for 90 days. And you do it for 90 days and then you get to 90 days. And it's like, oh, well, now I'm counting. Now I've now I've realized that I've begun the countdown to starting over and to hopping right back uh, to snapping back to old habits. So we're trying to create a healthy relationship with food that opens up your choices rather than closes your choices off. That's that's key here, okay? We recognize that the best method to achieve these goals would be to focus on one small win at a time. That's the key that I want you to focus on for the rest of this session with me is one small win at a time. So the cycle of lasting change is predicated on you incorporating one small win at a time to turn those little wins then into concrete habits, nutritional habits, not diets, nutritional habits, because we want to make sure that this is a lifelong commitment. We take the educational approach to your food and your fitness so that these can then become lifelong habits. And our belief is that you should never make changes to your routine, to your rituals that you don't intend on keeping forever. So that's why we call it one small win. We're not trying to swallow the whale whole. We're trying to bite off one chunk at a time, one piece that we can chew, that we can consume at a time, that can make us feel accomplished, that can give us confidence, that can create the big momentum in our life that's gonna take us to ultimately where we wanna go, but doing so in it with a strategy, with a tool, with a system that's methodical. Most of us are methodical. We like organization. We like the playbook. I give... Most anyone a playbook, everyone can follow a playbook. Even those stubborn people that like to create the playbooks, they can even follow one if you give them one. But here's the key, not everyone can create the playbook. So if you don't know what to do, here's the playbook, here's the framework. I'm gonna show you exactly and teach you exactly what to do here, okay? So as I promised, if you are if you are watching this on a screen, I'm gonna show you just what this cycle of lasting change looks like, just in case you wanna take a screenshot, okay? And I'll do that here. And we're on YouTube. We're on podcasts. We're on all of these uh, all of these platforms. So if you want to snap back and grab the video, it's always on YouTube. And I just wanted to show the cycle of lasting change, what I'm about to talk through, just in case any of you wanted to see it. Okay, now listen. The cycle of lasting change works like this. There's four parts to it. Part one is we need to create awareness, okay? Creating awareness. Part two is we need to establish a small win. So we need to set up the rules for success. We need to know what game we're playing because when we know what game we're playing, we're more likely to be successful. And then we need to normalize that small win. We need to ensure that the small win that we set out to accomplish is actually fundamentally became a part of a ritual or a set of rituals. 
Not, it's not just a habit. It's not just something that you're getting in the routine of doing or start doing and then you move on and you try something else. It's you normalize a small win. You do it so often, so frequently, so consistently that it becomes a part of your identity, all right? And then you're gonna move on to focus meeting, all right? This is going to be, for those of you who are listening to this that are members, this is going to be a sit down with your burn bootcamp trainer. For those of you that are not members, when you become a member, this is going to be a sit down with your burn bootcamp trainer. But until then, you know, you can sit down with somebody that you regard as knowledgeable in this area of life, and you can use this framework with them to help uh, to help talk this out and to navigate this. Okay, and so I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you this cycle. All right, these four pieces: create awareness, establish a small win normalize the small win, and then have a meeting, okay? Whether that be a focus meeting or a meeting. And this is the cycle of cycle of lasting change. This is how you're going to create transformation because here's what's true and here's why we created this because you far overestimate what you can do in a single year with your health, with your body, with your fitness, with your finances, with your relationship, but you dramatically and even even further under, underestimate what you can do in five years or 10 years when you compound small wins and you're focused on the outcome of the week, the outcome of the month, not the outcome of the day, okay? And giving yourself time to not have to think that you need to go out and lose 25 pounds of body fat in 30 days or let anybody pressure you into thinking that that's the logical pathway to success and that's what health is all about. No, health is about establishing and maintaining and actively recruiting strategies and rituals to pursue a healthy lifestyle. That's what it is. Okay? To pers- you're actively pursuing a healthy lifestyle. That's what we're after. And the way that we do that is the cycle of lasting change. If you just try to go out and make a 90-day plan and put together, you know, all, you know, you do your you do your little one sheeter and you set up all your goals and you write down the weight that you want to lose and you do them in a smart fashion where you're specific and you're measurable and you're you're relative and you're and you're and you're timely and you're attain all that stuff right this everybody knows smart goals and you set out on 90 days and you go as hard as you can how many of you have done this before right or 30 days and you go as hard as you can and you have a goal and at the end of the goal you get there you feel accomplished you deprived yourself so hard for so long and it's such a contrast and contradiction to the lifestyle that you lived prior to the 90 days that all you can think about is the very last day when you hit day zero and how you are going to go party when that time comes. You're going to go tear it up. You're going to go on a four day bender. You're going to go to the club. You know, if you were like, if you were, if you weren't focused on health and you were focused maybe this 90 day period on like quitting smoking or quitting drinking, you're going to go right back to smoking that cigarette or hitting that vape. You're going to go right back to drinking alcohol. If you have the countdown, if you're trying to swallow the whale whole, the whale will get stuck in your throat. I promise you, you will have to throw it back up. You will have to throw it back up and it's going, you're going to be worse than you were when you started. Okay. So I'm just trying to frame the problem for you, a problem that most of you probably have experienced or know someone who has experienced in your lifetime so that we can then work through this cycle of lasting change and you know that this is the system and it's the solution to the problem. All right, so number one, we'll dive into each section now is to create awareness. Create awareness. At the core of all fundamental transformation is self-awareness. It's the most overlooked personal skill that, that uh, a personal skill that is an inherited that can be developed is self-awareness, your ability to slow down and you know make a carbon copy of yourself that's with you in the room at all times and have that carbon copy of yourself, that shadow version of yourself, be the observer of your effort, your attitude, and your belief and your energy at all times. That's what creating awareness is, okay? So if you get really good at self-awareness, you don't need anybody for this, for this particular for this particular first step, but you cannot move forward to identify a small one if you're not creating awareness around uh, um, around what your goals are, creating awareness around what you're setting out to accomplish, creating a, a, awareness around 
your nutritional habits, where, where they currently sit at today, how many calories that you're intaking. You know, oftentimes to create, uh, oftentimes there's like, there's two types of self-awareness. There's the self-awareness where it's like, hey, if I just slowed down, created the carbon copy of myself and just like observed, I could probably look at the intangibles, like my attitude, my effort and my belief. And I could probably make qualitative assumptions about those things and and probably and probably make some observations that would be helpful. And then there's also the tangible self-awareness where it's like, hey, no, nutrition is a complex technical it's a technical thing. It's a tangible thing. I'm eating every day. Do I really know how many calories are in my food? Do I really know like in that 42 ounce, you know, iced tea that I'm drinking from the fountain pop store every day? I say pop, I'm from Michigan. So soda for those of you in different parts of the world um, or some parts of the world, you call a Pepsi a Coke. I don't get why you'd call Pepsi a Coke, but that's good for Coke, I guess. But all these soft drinks and things like this, are you realizing how many calories, how many grams of sugar in these things? I, I turn my, you know, at, at the Klein household, you know, we have a, we have a, what I would call a semi, a semi uh, non-negotiable um, nutritional habits, right? Like we modify a healthy diet from now and then, but our, our nutrition habits, our rituals are, they're pretty much non-negotiable. Like added sugar is a big no-no and sometimes it'll creep in the house and sometimes it'll even creep by because we're going so fast and we don't stop to look at labels and we'll turn a label over on something that might might look healthy and it will say 37 grams of sugar in the back added sugar oh yeah no carbs right and they tout that or no uh no fat or something whatever they tout that on the front in the marketing but really 37 grams of, sh of added sugar uh, it's pure toxicity and so we need to create awareness on this t uh, on this tangible side of of the equation like the nutrition aspect of it right form and performance is another tangible like in the gym right form and performance in the gym is another tangible area of self awareness and by the way creating awareness doesn't just need to be on nutrition like if you're talking to somebody like me, I don't need. We, we're not, I'm not. I'm not self-identifying my nutrition gaps at this point in the game. That, that came a long time ago, right? I understand my nutrition gaps. I know where they are, um, and you know my small wins more so nowadays are based on performance goals and metrics. My small wins, um, you know, one of my small wins is I want to do. I want to make a habit, a ritual. Remember, we go back to our philosophy. Something that we t intend on keeping forever. I want to stay in tip-top shape so that when our trainers come in for a strength and conditioning assessment at Burn University, as I get older and they keep staying the same age, I'm going to still be able to compete with these trainers that are coming in, even as I'm in, you know, my mid-30s now and, and um, you know, approaching into my late 30s over this next portion of my career. I want to make sure that these young guns who are out here, the next generation knows the old boy can still get it, right? So that's my small win is how can I increase my time for that SAC just a little bit each time so that I feel like I'm progressing. Okay, now as a byproduct of that, I know that I the, the less body fat that I have on my body, the less mass that I have, going back to uh, uh, Newton's uh, laws of the universe, right? Like the less body mass that I have, the faster I'm gonna be able to move, the more velocity I'm gonna be able to create. So my body fat is an aesthetic for me, it's not because I look in the mirror and say, I don't have a six pack right now. Like that makes me sad. Let's, you know, like let's get a six pack and set that goal. That's not a compelling, motivating, enchanting goal for me. Um, so just trying to give you some ideology around how to create awareness, types of awareness, how there's intangibles, how you can create that shadow version of yourself um, there's the tangibles in which you can log three days with the app like MyFitnessPal or um, what's the other one? Lose It is another favorite of Burn Bootcamp. And you can create awareness on just, just by going through a process, like a tangible process. And then you pick out, you write down a handful of things that you know that you want to get better at. And then you rank order them in the things that are going to inspire you the most. All right. If I wanted to create the gaps in my life from where I am to where I want to go, I have a bunch of things. And the way that I'm going to think about it and write it down is probably things that are much, much, much bigger than I want you to focus on. Okay. So then we're going to move on to the second step. So you create all this awareness. 
All right, let's say you boil that down to the top three things that you um, are that you have that are gaps from where you are to where you want to be. You're going to take these over into step number two, establish a small win. We call it the reverse engineering process. The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to take that one thing. All right, let's use it in, in this example. Let's use a nutrition example. Let's use protein, all right? I'm going to give you guys our small wins. Here's five, okay, five small wins that most commonly end up in this category, okay? So we've done this a lot with a lot of you, a lot of members. I've spoken with a lot of our trainers and just thousands and thousands of people in general to come to the conclusion that these five top small wins are usually the things that make it from um, create awareness to establishing a small win. And why is that phenomenon true? Because we are all very, we're much more similar than we are different as human beings. And we are much more complex and confusing and complicated than a lot of us give ourselves credit for. Um, but all of that, you, you know, so so reasonably, it's hard to figure this stuff out because we are complex individuals. But the reason we're able to aggregate some of this information for you and the reason the podcast exists in the first place is to bring you shortcuts, hacks, reasons, ways to ways to not have to go through the thousands and thousands and thousands of interactions with the, by the way, because we're so similar with the same 12 human archetypes with the same handful of problems. Our problems don't, don't vary too often once you start to get a huge sample size. There's outliers, but most of the problems that we all share, um, which you might find interesting, are remarkably similar remarkably similar. So we're much more the same than we are different. So when you're establishing a small win, there's five of them. And they're in this order, especially when you're doing demanding workouts, not exercise, not activity, not exercise, but demanding workouts. Okay. There can be, there can be activity like walking around the block and that's good and great, but don't mistake that for exercise, which is kicking that up to a jog, right? A steady state jog which don't mistake that for a demanding workout. When your ass can't talk for 45 minutes straight and you're huffing and puffing and there ain't nothing enjoyable about while you're in it. While you're doing it is because you're working on the character, right? When you're doing some activity, that's pretty enjoyable. I can meditate, I can breathe, I can give myself some mantra cadences, I can talk about I am good, I am great, I am strong, and I can walk around the block just reciting those things in my head. I'm doing some exercise, all right, baby, I'm focused on solving a complex problem, just trying to get in my steady state, my tunnel vision. Hey, when you get when it's when it gets brought, when it's when it's demanding of you, when it's demanding exercise, demanding workouts, you know you're at a burn boot camp, and you know you ain't meditating on anything. Besides, why the hell did I come here today? I can't wait till this is over, but I also can't wait to be back tomorrow. Why? Because it gives us that confidence, and we love it. We're gonna keep coming back to it, but that demanding effort, that energy, that intensity that you have to put into those demanding workouts, that upper echelon of fitness, of, of exercise, the demand is what creates the change. That's what that's where all the magic sauce lives. And it's the place that so many people are unwilling to go. We're giving you more and more and more people reasons with burn to get there because it's not about the muscles you're building. It's about the character you're building. So you got to recover when you have demanding workouts. So here's top five small wins in this order based on demanding workouts. 100 grams of protein, 100 grams of protein. You're going to read all the amounts of literature that are going to give you all the amounts of opinions that are all the amounts of overstated, overinflated, although true and empirical, overstated, overinflated rules and regulations about grams per body pound, per, bo per kilogram, per lean muscular mass. Listen, I lost myself at lean muscular mass. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to navigate the science world of this whole, uh, of this whole health journey that you're on. And I don't want to bring too much science into it. Okay. So 100 grams of protein is your baseline. If you're good at getting 100 grams of protein, that's a start. Right now, look at yourself in the mirror. Right now, yes, and I'm talking to all of you, 85% of you are not getting 
100 grams of protein in your diet right now today. All right? So some tangible self-awareness might say, okay, that's a great small win to focus on. Let me get 100 grams of protein in my diet every single day. That's the example we're going to use. I'm going to snap you back to establish a small win. We're going to use the 100 gram of protein goal, but I'm going to list the other top four things that we notice are created through a st- uh, creating awareness. Removing added sugar. Okay, this is another fundamental, most important one that comes through. Not sugar. I'm not saying don't eat bananas. I love me some bananas. It's one of my favorite foods. Okay? But if you're pouring, if you're sprinkling cane sugar on your banana, big problem. Okay? Remove the added sugar. Remove the added sugar. Or we, we have a line of supplements before, during, and after. We call it fitness-specific nutrition. Okay, that's Burn Nutrition, our product line. The, the glue that holds it all together is no and low sugar. No and low sugar. All right, so you want to remove as much added sugar as you can as a, a second small one that you'd want to focus on right off the gate if you don't know where to start. Number three, increase hydration. Did you know, people, that if you're dehydrated, mean you lack the you lack the amount of water per um, per body pound that you would need in order to hydrate optimally, and you then hydrate optimally for a consistent period of time, you can increase your metabolism just by that one change alone by thirty percent up to. It's crazy. But we have excuses like we go through the day and, you know, we get too busy to drink water. It's like, no, 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 no. You need your agua, another small win. Don't overlook it. Number four is control the alcohol intake. We're not going to tell you no alcohol. Come on, who you think we are? We weren't born yesterday. We've been doing this. We're not going to just be the company that's like, hey, hey, come here, come here. You want to get, you want to be successful? Yeah. Huh? Are you sure you want it real bad? Good. Great, boiled chicken breast, steamed broccoli, zero alcohol, no donuts. <laughs> like, raise your hand if that has worked for you. Yeah, that's what I thought. No one, no one wants to be told they can't have. No one wants to be reduced to complete elimination, especially when it comes to food especially when it comes to alcohol because alcohol is a has a direct correlation in the majority of people's lives to their social life and their and their quality of life is a has one of the pillars to their quality of life is their social life and in our mission statement we say to maximize the quality of your life which also means your social life which also means we can't eliminate and be naive and uh, unpractical and think we can just eliminate alcohol and say that you are only successful if you don't drink, okay? It's crazy talk. It's zero to four. You have the option. This is what healthy is. Zero to four drinks a week. Zero to four drinks a week. Whatever that means to you. You shouldn't be drinking every night. You should be taking days off if you're a glass of wine a nighter. Take a day. Take two days off. You got to take days off. But And if you're one of those people that likes to have fun and likes to go out and get a little wild, all right, then put all four into Friday night and, and, you know, just, but just have a methodology there. And then the last one is control the calorie intake. Again, the word control, not eliminate. We want to open up options for you rather than shut them down. We don't want to, we don't want to, we don't want to cut off possibilities. We want to open up possibility because when there's possibility, you have belief. And when you have belief, there's probability. See how that goes? there's possibility that means there's a range of options for you to choose from, then you're going to have a higher level of belief in those options because there's more to choose from. We like choice. We don't want to be eliminated. And when there's that choice to make, you have those options. You have that belief okay, that leads to the probability that you're going to actually execute, right? So possibility leads to belief, leads to probability. It's so important for you to remember as you're navigating your nutritional especially your nutritional journey, but also your performance journey as well, okay? And that would be the close sixth would be, hey, let's talk about some performance journeys. But a lot of the small wins in practicality, as you see here, the top five that we see most often are nutritional-based. 
because it's an intangible awareness that not a lot of people are techni technically educated in, all right? So you don't need to be technically educated. That's why we created this cycle of lasting change, all right? So let's go back and let's, like I said, use 100 grams of protein to talk about um, uh, an example so that you can see an example go through this cycle. All right, so let's go back to really quickly to create awareness. I do a three-day food log with my trainer. All right, my trainer points out to me that, hey, we have one of the most common five things that we see are the five things that I just recited, 100 grams of protein, remove added sugar, increase hydration, control alcohol intake, and control caloric intake. Those are the five things right off the bat. Devin, what I see you struggling with the most right here right now is protein. Why is that number one? Because you're working out hard. You're doing demanding workouts. If you're not recovering properly, that means how you eat and how you sleep. We're not going to overtrain your body in a can, but you could undereat and you could undersleep and the other 23 hours and 15 minutes outside then you're not going to recover. And not only are you not going to recover and you're not going to feel as good as quick, you're in, and you're also going to not take advantage of the muscle build, especially in our strength days, that you could gain if you're not getting protein, which has amino acids in it, which are the building blocks of protein. Devin, you need 100 grams of protein, okay? So we've got, we've done a track, we've done a focus meeting, I've now got my, I've now established and created this awareness, all right? Now I'm establishing that small win, okay? All right, they picked out other things in my food log too, right? But they established that small win. They say, hey, Devin, you're at 60 grams of protein. Here's where the reverse engineering process comes in. This is where number two, establish a small win is so important. Devin, I see that you're at 50 grams of protein on average for the last three days. You're only 50% of the way there for you to get to 100 I'm not going to ask of you to go from 50 to 100 tomorrow, okay? What I'm going to ask of you is to get 10 more grams in per week over the next five weeks. Do you believe, Devin, that you can just, instead of doing four ounces of that chicken breast that you did for that meal, that you could just do five? Could you do that? And what we're trying to get out of you as trainers is we're trying to get you to say, not only could I probably very easily tomorrow wake up and go from 50 to 100 grams, yes, no problem, I could challenge and push myself to do that. But I'm gonna break that down even smaller so that I have a higher probability because I have um, a higher belief, so I have a higher probability of actually following through and I know for certain I can put five ounces instead of six. I don't, there's a little bit more uncertainty of how to get to 50 to 100 because to go, now I got to do five ounces instead of six. I got to build another smoothie into my, uh, afterburn smoothie into my daily routine. Um, I have to probably incorporate some, a bigger breakfast and I'm already not that, you know, hungry in the morning. So eliminating barriers to us to to getting to that win is important, right? Do you guys follow me? Do you see where I'm going? All right. So then I, we we high five. We believe in that. We believe in that game plan. It's going to be five weeks, ten grams, and then we're going to do at the end of five weeks, we're going to do another three day food log, and I'm going to say, okay, have we normalized this small win? Did you do this consistently for five weeks? Great, awesome. We're going to do another five weeks. That's where most of us go wrong. That's where most of us want to go now, 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 now. We want to be so impatient. We want to be so impatient with our body, with our health, with our journey. We want everything to happen right now, right? And that urgency, I love that urgency. I don't want you to get rid of that urgency. And you keep that urgency in the macro, but you need patience in the micro. You need patience on what success and what winning looks like. I promise you, if you have any ounce of trust in what I say at all, in my direction at all, when you go slower and you establish smaller wins that are certain that you're going to hit them, and then you do that for twice as long or, further or more than you think you need to, you are going to get better results with less effort. You're going to get better results with less effort because you do not need to do all the things that you think you need to do 
as precisely and as vigorously and as rigorously as you need to do them or as you actually need to do them in reality than you do in your head. You're going to overstate and you're going to overemphasize how hard you need to go at it in order to produce the results. You guys follow me? Don't you want to eliminate difficulty, right? From a from a perspective of getting from you from where you're at right now to where you want to go. Wouldn't you want to maximize and optimize that journey? Well, by trying to cram everything in everything under the umbrella of pursuing actively pursuing health and wellness in 30, 60, 90 days, it's never ever ever going to work. Even a year it's not going to work. You're going to get disenchanted with that process. Here's the key. Here's why it's going to give you more effort, more um, results with with less with with a less difficult path is because it conditions you to enjoy the process. It conditions you that the process of winning is more important than the actual goal itself. That the process of you, let's say, instead of saying that you need a hundred grams of protein to snap to that right now tomorrow. And you know you you already kind of struggled to get get fifty grams in in the first place. Is it going to create more or less confidence in you if you miss if you miss going from fifty to a hundred over the next three days after we establish this win that we're going to go after? At, we walk out of a meeting, we establish a small win, and I say, "Hey, I need you to get a hundred grams starting now today." And if you fail one time in those next three days. I'm, that would be me setting you up for failure. I need I need you to establish a small win that you are 100% certain that for the next, like out the gate, you got this. No problem, okay? And that you intend on keeping it forever. That's very important. We're gonna normalize it. We're gonna check in on it. Five weeks later, we're gonna establish it, make sure we did it, and then we're gonna double it up and make sure we do it again that's where this key comes in. That's where y'all can't get bored with consistency. That's where you can't get bored with discipline. That's where you can't get bored with building rituals. This is how you build rituals. This is called nutrition habits, not diet, right? This is building a diet is saying, hey, let's try this quick thing and let's see if it works or not. Building a ritual is let's say, hey, let's try this thing that we methodically identified that we know and we're certain that we have a solve for and that we can systematically that we can systematically and fundamentally create and establish that win to become part of my identity my rituals something that I do part of my being who I am not just some superficial goal that I'm going after do you see how and why this is called the cycle of lasting change do you see how this can transform your 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 perspective Mentally too, it's not just a physical transformation tool. It's a it's a psychological transformation tool. It's giving you a different perspective on how to approach what we've been what's been broken for the last 100 years in this diet culture. It's everybody trying to get everything right now. You see this in business too. My two worlds are so parallel. You see fitness and in business. You see people that overestimate what they can do in one year, underestimate what they can do in five. They go out, they try to smash and establish all of these wins in one year. And, uh, you know, thinking they're going to have this huge company and make make a million dollars and, you know, do it all and have all these employees and all these team members. And they don't just start with like, where's my first customer? And how can I take care of that one person? And how can I establish a relationship that with that one person that is a lasting relationship with them so that they, they can become a confidant and a, and a supporter and a pat, patron of what I do and an and a, uh, ambassador to my vision and how do I get them then to tell one more person? You see the difference? It's like it's like stop dreaming and start doing. Let's be less less esoteric and less philosophical about what we want to accomplish and more strategic and tactical. We need 5% focused on the vision. We need 95% focused on the execution. And when you have that balance, and if it's inversed, then you're just going to be treading water and you're going to continually be frustrated. If you're constantly talking about what you're doing, 95% of that time is the plan, the plan, or the vision, the vision, the vision, what I'm about to do, what I could do, what I might do, what I should do. Hey, if you should, and you should, and you should, and you should, and you should. I heard a mentor of mine, Jim Rohn, one time say, well, if you should enough, you're going to should all over yourself, and nobody wants to should on themselves. And if you can catch my drift in there, that's a bad habit to get in, to should, should yourself. <laughs> 
And then number four, we're normalizing that small win. All right. And then it's that high five. It's that celebration. It's locking that small win in. And it's like I said, having that focus meeting to um, sit down, to have another meeting to say, hey, listen, we just did that. That was so good. Very nice job. Not only did we not only were we certain uh, we went out oh, that we could establish a small win, we did it. We did it for twice as long as we thought we needed to. It is now a part of your identity. Do you feel like it's your part of your identity? 10-4, roger that. Let's go. Awesome. What's next? Right? This is called the power of compounding. Okay? The power of compounding. Taking each individual one small win at a time something that you're certain that you want a part of your identity, making it a part of your identity, establishing it as a ritual, and then saying, what's the very next step that I can take up the mountain? All right? So this has been the cycle of lasting change. This is how you transform your body from the inside out. This is psychology. It's, it's, it's physiology. It's a strategy for you as a member of Burn Boot Camp or as somebody who is just a fan and who loves loves listening to these podcasts or or uses our information to help you you in in, in your uh, sphere of influence become more educated. I I want you to know just because this says Burn Boot Camp on our podcast that you from all avenues of fitness, from all walks of life, from every modality, from yoga to CrossFit to to bar to cycle to, you know, every modality. We love it. We're into it. We welcome you. There's, there's so many people and there's so much knowledge to be shared. So I hope you enjoyed this. This is a little slice of the philosophy from the greater philosophical burn boot camp structure. Everybody appreciate your time, your effort, your energy making sure that you're letting me know what you think about this though. What the most important thing to me is, is that y'all leave in reviews on the podcast. I look at the Apple one. So if you want to make me happy, then you go to Apple podcasts and you leave a review there. That would make me really happy. I promise. And I will screenshot it and I'll share it and I'll pump you up. I'll gas you up for supporting the burn bootcamp podcast. Thank you so much guys. Two claps on two, one, two.